Hi, Ann Cornick from Paint and Porcelain Exchange. And um, I'm here to teach beginners how to get started in China painting. And hopefully for those of you uh, that have been painting a while to challenge you a little bit and try some new things so that you don't get bored. Or if you're teaching to give you things that you can share with beginners uh, that you might have in your group. This is how my mug came out. And you can see it's very pale very very pale and that's where the dock is going to be now we're going to finish from here from here over today we're going to finish the from the island all the way over to uh, the canoe and i will show you what to do for that if in fact you don't uh, you you want to finish the whole thing then you'll have to finish this section by yourself if you have a big mug like mine if you don't um, the one that I already finished, that island pretty much ends it. See, on mine, this one. So I didn't put anything more. I just, so I have the seawall, and I have um, the canoe and the birch trees. We're going to do a lot of the pen work so that the next time all we do is work on the, the background stuff. But I will show you how to do these trees that are in the background today so that you can finish those out on your own. Right. So we're gonna start on this side of it first. I wanna show you how we're gonna do these background uh, little um, bushes. I'm gonna start by using um, this kind of a brush. If you have it, a little rounded brush, this is a four. Um, you don't have to use the rounded brush if you don't have it, but if you do, that's nice. If not, you can use um, like even um, a pointer or a number four regular square shader would work fine too. Alrighty, so I've got this, and I'm gonna start making little, I'm gonna full load with a chartreuse, side load with like a shading green, because back here, everything seems to have more of a soft, sort of almost like a foggy color, and you're just gonna make, look at this, full load of chartreuse, side load of shading green, or a dark green, whatever you have. And you're just going to make these little lumps back there, like this. And these are going to be the trees in the background. And you're going to kind of try to, underneath them, make them a little straight. But when you put your water in next week and everything, that will, that will clear up. So, And I'm just, the key is to make sure that you have a, a, a little bit of a strong shadow. See how this one does? has a real nice strong shadow on it. That's what you want on all these others. So I'm trying to do that. There we go, that's a little better. That side load of shading green should really help you there. And you make them all sizes, okay? And that's just in the background. So let me show you what they'll look like when we're done. When we're all done with this, you'll see we're, we're gonna need another coat on them with a little bit darker green, and they'll be on the very edge. We're gonna start on our island. Um, I used a, a pen. I'm gonna skip this, because I'm doing that. This is the part that you're gonna finish if you have a wide mug like I do now. Um, I'm gonna start on the island. If you ha I used a pen the first time. I think what I'm gonna do is use my, um, my liner the second time. I'm gonna get in my brown. It has a couple little places where it has some tall trees. Oops, let me get some more black. I'm using a rich brown on here, and I'm just going from the bottom up. And they can be, you can see I'm a little shaky, so I've got this little, there we go, or top down, whatever you want to do, and place a few of these uh, trees and branches and things on there, just so you have them. Can you see what I'm doing here? And then... Some of these will have little thingies coming out the top like this. And you can play with those later. And if you do like I just did on there and you make a, a little bit of a puddle at the top, you can also use your, use your um, Q-tip to kind of get rid of it. So I'm going to start at this one. Had um, is just kind of a, 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 a tree that's sticking up there. Okay, so that tree is now, I'm just going to start on this third of the island. So the first thing I'm going to do is take some black. Um, I'm going to use my pointer, and I'm going to take some uh, black green or a dark green of some sort. So what if you have a dark green, black green, even a um, warm brown green is kind of a darkish green. 
And you're just going to make little evergreens. Now, I make my evergreens like this. I start at the top, and then I sort of, oops, I sort of come in this way and this way. I want that top to be really nice there. That's better. And then I do a couple this way, and this way, and this way, and this way. Remember, these are way off in the distance. You don't need to, to do every needle on them, ladies. Some of you are real go-getters when it comes to doing these. Then you're going to take your liner, and you're going to put a little bit, just a little bit, of the um, trunk in there that way. Okay, and then I also see, and I'm going to change colors because you should change colors as you're doing this so that things look like different, like they're separate. And I'm just using a little warm brown, a little um, chartreuse on my brush, and I'm making this little clump of stuff right there. Let me get a little more warm brown here. And it's just a little clump of stuff, so I'm kind of, there we go. Okay, there's another evergreen there. Now that evergreen in the background is going to be more of a, a gray green because it's it's further back and it has that misty bluish look to it that you get from the distance. So this one, I'm just gonna do this way. They can lean a little, it doesn't matter. Okay, and that's all I'm doing there. And this one in the background, again, I'm getting my, where is he? Here's my liner, and I'm just going to put a little bit of black, rich brown on it. And I'm just going to, oops, come on, rich brown, cooperate with me. <laughs> a little bit back here, just so you can see it. Use an autumn brown for a change, something a little different. I'm just changing things up so that they're, a little bit different. This one looks like it only had it on this side. Oops, sorry. And it only has a few on this side. Oh, well, let me clean that up a little. There we go, and there we go. Okay, and I'm just gonna come down and he's just kinda, he's in front of this other one. But he lost some of his branches up at the top. They aren't real prominent, okay? And he only goes about that far. And then there's another tree in front of him. And the tree in front of him, I am going to do a chartreuse and shading green. Okay, so I've got chartreuse here and shading green. Where the heck is my shade? Oh, there it is. Using a full palette today. And this is going to be a pretty large tree. And it, you're not going to be able to see. No, oh, I guess I want a little more of the black green than the shading green. Okay. And you're not going to be able to see a, a whole lot of the... Um, let me get the black green on here real well. Okay. You're not going to be able to see a whole lot of the uh, trunk on this one. Okay, I've got two of these pointers, so I'm going to take the other pointer, put it in <clears throat> chartreuse, and get a little chartreuse. Up. No, chartreuse doesn't work. Let's try moss. And then I'm going to bring it down like this. Keep coming. Okay, now we're getting down to the shoreline, and I want the shoreline to be... And it's, it's, it's fairly dark, so I'm just putting some dark spaces in here, and I'm leaving a couple little spots where I can put some chartreuse or yellow because um, there's like a sun coming through. Back here in the background, we're going to actually have the blue coming through from the, um, well, I can put a little tree there, but we can have the blue coming through from the, um, from the sky. And then I just keep going across and sort of doing the same thing all the way across. So you have your little trees in the background. See, I already got my hand in them, and I knew I would, but I wanted to be able to show you what I did. And um, then across here, we're just going to do a little more of the black green and do that right here. Leave a little bit of space. And, and if you look at my island at the bottom, everything is pretty much black. Um, 
I'm going to put another little tree right here. And you just, yeah, there. See, instant evergreen. I'm going to take my liner. Because it seems like um, when I'm doing, using my liner, it seems like it flows a little better than some of the other oil. And then, then we got this one here. And you can make them different. Don't always go to the right. Go to the left or go both directions. Okay, and then there's this guy on the end that kind of goes like this. Okay, and we have a couple right in here that are trees. Put a little bit of tree in here if you want. And then I'm going to take my green again. Take my, I'm using my pointer because I like the pointer for doing these trees. It just makes it easier for me. And I'm starting with the moss green, and these are regular trees. So I'm just tapping. Now the sun's coming this way from the right. So I'm just tapping these little trees in. Tap, tap, tap. And then we want some shrubs underneath them. I take my gray green and make a few of these shrubs back here. They don't have to be perfect, remember, you're you're miles and miles off. This is what I have so far, just so you can see. So it's miles and miles off. So if you do it this way, this is the first fire. I'm gonna put the dark down here. The other thing I'm going to do is add a little yellow. And the reason, I and it, it's not just a yellow. I kind of almost want a gold. So if you have like a, uh, a golden okra, would be good. But I'm just going to put a little yellow up in here too. A little variety there. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take and put a brighter green on this island. Oops, I need my oil. I always forget to put my oil on. And I'm just going to take and put a little here and a little here. I might want to mix it with a little bright yellow so that it, yeah, that's better. I'm using lemon yellow on my pointer now to add a little brightness there. Okay, so that's the end of my island. Next time I can perk it up. Oh, I want to put a little dark on here on that one tree I did. So let me get the black green. Okay, and we'll just, on this side and inside the middle of it. There, okay? And maybe a little, you notice, there, okay? I don't want it to look like a Christmas tree though, so, okay. So that's what I have done so far on that little island. And I've smushed them all now, but I have my little trees back there. So, um, and I will continue to smush things as I go across. And then I'm going to have to redo this whole thing, but just so you get the idea. Now, on this, it ran for me, as you can see. I must have had too much oil on my brush. See, it happens to me too. So I'm going to do this, which is the, um, the little seawall there. And I just did all this with pen. Let me show you. Move this out of the way for a minute. I'm I'm going to take my, um, the color I want to use is the rich brown. Okay. And I'm going to put rich brown on here. Then I'm going to take my non-drying oil. And this is AMPS, I'm um, AMP5, Easy Flow. Got it from Dallas, China. This I bought this when I retired, seven years old, and that's as much as I've used of it. So it goes a long way. Just taking and putting it on this tiny knife, and I'm putting a, a, a drop over there, and then I'm starting to mix it, because it already has oil in it, right? So we don't want to put a lot there, but it's going to start to dry out at some point. Uh, are you going to drip? Not quite. It could use a little more. Okay. I don't want it to run, though. I had enough with running. Okay. And that's how I mix up my stuff instead of starting from scratch. You can start from scratch with the powder and everything, but 
I'm not a patient person, and I think this will work. If it doesn't work, then I'll use the powder. But, you know, there are things you can do to save yourself a little bit of time. You might as well do them. Okay, so now we're going to be working on this little guy. I've got my pen here. I changed my nub. Um, I was having real problems with the old one. And, um, you know, sometimes you have to remember, oh, I need to put some, um, I need to put a post there because the posts kind of fell apart, didn't they? All right, let's get the rich brown out here and just put a couple of posts in there. Oh, I'm sorry. And I think I want to put a little bit of dark here and a little bit of dark here. And then I want to put a little dark underneath. Oops. I'm just using the, uh, the dark from the from the pen oil. You can paint with the pen oil. So, um, okay, now I have my pen oil on here and I'm just gonna start drawing. Can you see? Yes, you can see. to see what I did before. I don't didn't even remember what I did before. Okay. And I'm going to do these little guys. Just do them to go into the sand. They don't have to be anything spectacular. Come on. I'm not a fan of uh, pens at all. Oh, and this one looks terrible too. Well, let's see what we can do to fix them up here. Well, that's not bad. So you can fix up just about anything. So you make a mistake, don't worry about it, you know? That's just the way it goes. That's the way it goes. Now I'm going to put a line across the top here because I want this to appear like a ledge on the top. And I'm doing the line now, but I don't have to do the line, the ledge. I don't have to make it look like a ledge now. I can... Add more color later. I think I want to bring this guy up a little higher. There we go. Okay. Keep checking and making sure you can see what I'm doing here. And then we're just going to make the boards have some kind of a board look on them. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, just kind of a, a board look of some sort. Yeah, you can make like M's going this way if you want, or Z's. You can you can just draw some lines if you want. Whatever you think is going to make it look boardish. And then down here, I'm going to put a little bit of a hill. I don't think I like that hill. I'm going to take that off. Okay, and here. Come on, baby. All right, so that's that. And I will put brown on the sand, so it's not. this is not going to be obvious in the future. Um, but I don't like those little lines I put there. I was trying to make mound lines, but they didn't really work really well. So I'll just smear them into the background, and hopefully when we add the brown in the future... Now, I could wink this little drizzle off if I wanted to. I don't know if I want to, so I'm just going to leave it there and see. If I if it gets in my way, I will. Okay, and now we're moving over to the boat and um, the trees. I'm not going to really 
finish off this part of the trees, but I wanna make sure that the pen work on here is pretty good. And uh, since I have the brown, I'm gonna do the boat now. You have to be kind of careful. You're gonna start here. And then you're gonna go. Oop. Holding my pen the wrong way. You always hold your pen on an angle. But like a 45 degree angle, you don't hold it. And see what I'm trying to do here is even things up. Really make it look like a canoe. Oh, I almost couldn't see what I was doing there. Okay, and then this comes up here and goes down here. So this needs to... This needs to come right up to there. Okay, that's better. And then I'm going to do this line. Good. And then, now these are just little things that go across right here. Oh. And this goes across here like this. Oh, these should be straight. Get my... Use, use your Q-tip as an eraser. It's great for that. Okay. When you're using a pen, just use your Q-tip as an eraser. Come on. And then there's one more area here we want to... Yet. Hmm, it looks like I lost some of the yeah, detail here. It disappeared on me, so I'm going to have to make my own detail. Okay. There we go. In the front of the canoe. and the bottom of the canoe. And there's this thing coming down here. And there's a board that goes across this way. And that's kind of dark, so I might as well just fill it in. Okay, see, that's what I've got so far with the canoe. And I want this outer rim to go up to here. There we go. And then you have the ribs inside, and they come down and across, and down and across. Oops. And down and across. Oh, you know what's happening? My oil is getting gunky. Hang on here. Let me take those out. get those out of there. I think I'm going to have to use a stump because that's not releasing enough. There, that's good. 
So one of the reasons that I put that extra oil on here is because now as it's drying out, I need it. So I've got the oil right here and I'm just gonna pull it over and use it. And that should help, because see, it has to drip like that. That's how you know your oil is good. Okay. All righty, so I'm gonna put this back, grab my pen. Hopefully it's not too oily, I mean too runny, but, and I'm just gonna finish these guys out. It should be a lot easier. Oh, it's too runny. Maybe it's not. Let me play. Let me see. Maybe not. Nope. It's not bad. Okay. Don't want it too dark, so. Okay, so those are the ribs in the bottom of the boat. We're gonna fire this. I'm missing the front of the boat here. I don't know, the color must have just totally come off. Fired out or something, here, let me. I want to get the front of the boat here. Okay. So the other thing is, if things fire out for you, all you have to do is go back in and add them. You know, you don't have to... Uh, this should bow a little more. Um, you don't have to do anything too fancy. I don't think I'm going to play with that right now. It's pretty good. Okay, and then the only other one I have to do is the base of the trees, the trunk of the trees, and that's what I'm doing right now. I'm going to get my black. And I'm going to put it on my, my tile, just like I did the other. Where are you, black? Here we go. Take my Easy Flow. Pull a little off. Put a little on here. Just You don't want to put too much on because if you do and it runs, you will not be a happy camper. And then try to puddle it up in one spot so it's easy to get on your pen. Uh, in this case, don't clean your pen with like turpentine or anything between these. Get yourself a Q-tip and just wipe out the old color like this. Because if you get turpentine on here now, it'll start running right away when you start using it on the on the mug. Here. Okay, so I'm here, and I'm just going to see right there. It just needed a little pick-me-up. In here, it's going to need a little pick-me-up, too. You're, you're not doing much. You're just sort of making sure that you've got all the little stuff on your tree and that it looks good. Consider it your final coat on this tree trunk. So you're just going in and making sure that it has like a little outline to it. And If you want to put a few more of these little guys on, you can put them on and they'll be a lot smaller and they'll look a lot nicer. So feel free. See, like if we did it right here, look at there. They're a lot smaller, you know, so... That might be what you need. Right here, I need to um, sharpen this up a little bit. And I need to turn there. And I don't like the way that turned out. So I'm going to make this a separate branch. And then come down here and finish out. Do you see what I did there? Come here, you. I'm making that a separate branch. And I'm gonna fix that there and fix that there. A little more on my pen. If your pen stops working or you're getting frustrated, try using one of these little tiny brushes with the pen ink. It'll give you kind of the same effect, but be careful because it'll be 
a little runnier than you're used to, and if you don't stay on the very tip, you will have a problem. It'll get too thick. But see there, I added a few branches, and here I might add a branch like that. Okay. And if you want a few branches up in the tree, you can do that. And you could put like here, and maybe one here. Okay. Maybe this guy goes up this way a little more. Where are you? There. And we see him up in here. Okay, so that's up to you. Okay, so that's really all we're doing on this fire is we did this, 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 and the island. That, and then if you want to, between here and the island, where's my brush? Here it is. That's probably the best place to try to do the, the this stuff. Now, you're going to have to put your hand inside in order to keep things from getting kind of messy for you because um, otherwise you are going to have kind of a mess. So I'm using in the background here where the, the, the tree line is back here. I did it on the other side. You're using a full load of chartreuse, a side load of shading, and you're just trying to get kind of a that effect there. And then even out the bottom of it a little bit. There we go. Full load of chartreuse, side load of black green or um, shading green, because you want it to be kind of bluish back there. You know how when you look into the into the um, distance, everything kind of has a blue cast to it, especially around a lake. But you're making more of these little the trees, and then just sort of squish them out on the bottom. Now, I don't know about you, but this is as much as I, I I'm going to do the dock yet and try not to touch this side. But, um, uh, and the dock, I'm just going to put it in and next time I'll do the pen work on it. I think that'll be the safest thing to do. So, um, anyway, I put my name on it, that kind of thing. Um, so pick up those brushes, keep painting. And I will see you next time. I hope you enjoyed the program. And I hope you'll take a minute to subscribe so that other people can learn more about China painting and we can get the word out to more people. Uh, you also can look at the links below. Uh, my paintandporcelain.com website has a lot of freebies and printables for uh, new and experienced painters, as well as studies, supplies, and even some of my hand-painted china. So thank you again, and I'll see you next time.